Happy Halloween, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting October 28, 2013. As always, it was a busy InfoSec news week, but I'm going to actually limit myself to three stories this week, starting with an update on the big Adobe Network security breach. You might remember a few weeks back when I warned you that Adobe found out that their network was breached and that attackers had stolen a ton of account credentials, as well as a lot of source code for popular apps like Flash and Cold Fusion. Well, this week, due to a blog post by Brian Krebs, we learned the breach was much larger than we first thought. Essentially, a Russian form leaked the actual database of account credentials. Uh, this was a file called user.tar.gz, so it was essentially a tarball of all the usernames and hashed credentials and email addresses stolen from Adobe. And long story short, researchers learned that there was over 158 million different uh, login accounts listed in this big database. Now, chances are a lot of these are duplicates, but in any case, the breach is definitely much larger than 38 million records. And by the way, that, that means that your potential password, if you've ever logged on to adobe.com or any of its properties, your password is probably going to be in the hands of an attacker soon. Adobe apparently used MD5 and SHA-1 hashing with a global salt. Uh, and that essentially means that attackers can brute force the actual hashed passwords, and they're probably going to find a lot of the passwords associated with the logins. So so again, if you used adobe.com ever in the past, be sure to change your password. On top of that, I hope you're not using the same password anywhere else online. If so, you absolutely need to change it because bad guys are probably going to be trying these credentials in many other sites, including maybe your banking site or, or maybe Gmail or other sites like that. The next story I want to cover is the latest NSA leaks. And this week, its story is about how the NSA is actually infiltrating and stealing data from Google and Yahoo. So long story short, we already know that, that the NSA can get some data, some customer data from private organizations like Google and Microsoft and Facebook by using this secret FISA court and, and getting a subpoena that, that forces these private organizations to share very specific customer information. But during the week, uh, the Washington Post released a story that had some new NSA slides talking about their muscular campaign. And this is a campaign where they actually are intercepting data sent between Google and Yahoo's data centers. So essentially these big private cloud organizations have data centers all over the world and they have to have these fiber connections to places in Europe and Asia so that customers in those regions can have faster access. Well as it turns out based on a very kind of snide handwritten uh, document from this slideshow, the NSA knows that Google actually decrypts the SSL connections their customer uses once it gets inside Google's cloud. So the actual connection between the US data center and, and international data centers share some unencrypted information. And it appears that the NSA actually have taps for this information. The NSA and other government organizations are buffering it and, and looking through this data. And this is kind of different than the past FISA court revelations in that Google and Yahoo say they were totally unaware of this potential hack. They did not realize the NSA is intercepting this international data. So it's a really, really big story. We'll see how it plays out. Already, by the way, Google and Yahoo are pretty much up in arms. And there's even some United States government officials that are pretty upset with this. You know, the whole idea that the NSA is snooping on this international private data can have some pretty big repercussions on the commercial world for the USA. You know, a lot of international organizations may not trust our cloud anymore. So very, very big NSA news. 
We'll continue to follow all the other NSA leaks in the future. So the last and, and arguably biggest story this week is something that you might expect to pop out of uh, the latest sci-fi cyberpunk thriller or maybe a Hollywood blockbuster movie. And it's news of some really advanced, really scary new malware that a well-known security researcher has claimed to found. Uh, the well-known researcher's name is Dragos Ryu, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his last name right, and he's someone that's been in the information security industry for a long time. He founded the Pwn to Own competition, and he's quite well known as a security researcher. Well, over the past few weeks on Twitter and Facebook and, and on various blog posts, Dragos has been describing this, this very advanced piece of malware he's been combating and researching, uh, according to him, over the past few years. It's some Something that happened when he first was reinstalling the operating system on his MacBook Air. He noticed uh, some unusual activity, the deletion of files, and it got him suspicious where he is trying to track down some malware on the computer. But over time, he found this really advanced piece of malware, or at least he claims to have found this advanced piece of malware that does all kinds of crazy things. First of all, it's cross-platform. It doesn't only affect Macs, it affects Windows PCs, but furthermore, it affects BSD computers and Linux computers as well. So we've never seen uh, cross-platform malware that worked on so many different platforms. It also does some interesting things such as totally disable uh, your CD-ROM drive or any sort of external drive that would allow you to reinstall the OS. Uh, Dragos hypothesizes that it's the malware's way of making sure you can install a clean computer. More importantly, uh, right now they're calling this malware bad BIOS because it actually in affects your motherboard's flash BIOS. Now this is something that's not science fiction. We've seen at Black Hat and other security conferences, researchers show that new malware can infect flash BIOS or many other flash chips that are on your motherboard or other hardware like your sound card or your video card. So this is something that theoretically could happen. But the way they describe this particular malware, Drago says it's very, very aggressive. That even when he uh, cleans the BIOS and reinstalls a new flash image onto his motherboard BIOS, the malware somehow still can, can self-heal and come back. But most scary and most tinfoil hat of all is the idea that this particular malware has a new technique at escaping air gapping. Air gapping, of course, is when you cut your computer off from the network so there's no way that it can actually transfer malware or any other file uh, that you know of. In any case, what uh, uh, Dragos did was he put his, his computer in a, a, a air-grapped network. It had no Bluetooth connection, no wireless connection, no network connection, suspecting that he could totally cut off this malware. But he found that it still got infected after he totally uh, cleaned the computer. And uh, doing some other tests, he theorizes that this is because of high frequency sound. Essentially, he thinks the malware uses uh, speakers to actually transmit high frequency sound to the microphone of other computers, and that's how the malware spreads. Now, this totally sounds almost crazy, paranoid science fiction y. But it is theoretically possible. I mean, uh, just recently I was visiting Amsterdam and I was talking to some partners about the olden days where I had a Trash 80 computer and it actually had a tape recorder, a tape cassette player. And that's how you stored computer programs back then. And the partner mentioned that wouldn't it be cool if you were a public uh, radio broadcaster. You could actually play back the digital audio recording on that cassette tape and it would probably sound like the modem sounds you might be familiar with. And and someone listening could record that and actually get a recording of the computer program. I mean, uh, this is just other ways of, of transferring digital information over audio. So it is totally theoretically possible that malware could spread over audio too. Nonetheless, when you add the multi-platforms, the, the high frequency audio spreading techniques, and all the crazy advanced techniques Dragos uh, talks about, it's really hard to know if this is really a kind of a, a, a well thought out prank or really advanced malware. Uh, a lot of researchers are, are following Dragos. He's again well respected so a lot of people are taking this very very seriously. 
But on the other hand, there are no binaries of the malware. Dragos has not shared any source code. There's a couple rumors that someone plans to post something to malware.lu, but no one's actually seen any binary samples of this. So it's hard to say if this is rumor or news, but it is very interesting nonetheless. As an aside, I bet you all the nation states out there, the people that are creating malware like Stuxnet, which really was advanced and knew how to uh, do the first ever rootkit on a programmable logic controller, they're, they're actually probably paying attention to some of the claims Dragos is making. And if there isn't malware that does this, I'm sure it has some people thinking about how you might use some of the techniques like passing over audio uh, in the future. So interesting story. I'll continue to follow it and let you know how it turns out. So that's it for this week's Halloween week episode. Uh, as usual, there's a ton of other security stories, like there's a 12-year-old hacker that hacked government sites for video games, and there's a new update for Firefox, and a lot of other stories. So as always, I really recommend you follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog. Besides posting security news there, I also post uh, the blog post for this video, which includes a reference section with, with links to all these security stories and extra security stories each week. So follow that. You can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard we're rooting for you.